Hello everyone and welcome back to Hermitcraft Season 5. I'm in a good mood right now, but I gotta start off this video with an apology. I'm sorry. I'll tell you, I'm sorry. I've got a little bit of a reputation for being the kind of guy who starts and finishes a project in an episode. Or at least makes a substantial amount of progress. And boy oh boy did we not do that last episode. Thank goodness I hooked up with XB and we went and checked out his Woodland Mansion because otherwise we would have achieved very little in that episode. Okay, so what were we doing? We were trying to outline a storage system, like the central storage system for this base and boy oh boy did the idea that I have not work out very well. Okay, this would have been horrible. I started to think about it. We would have required four floors that are quite a distance from one another for one part of a four part storage system. Now picture what it's like when you need one item, it's over here and then the other one is all the way down there, you've got to walk around, go down floors, that is not good, that is not good. And then I had a little bit of a, a light bulb popping off in the head, I had a good idea which is that we need to put everything on one single floor, right? And then I've taken the time to plan out everything in advance. We're going to see some seriously cool storage system ideas today, okay? We may even build an entire storage system as well. It's going to be really cool. And you can see that I've sort of laid this thing down right here. That's going to be like the parameter of this thing and everything will be on the same floor. So the furthest I have to walk is from one side over to the other. And that's not going to be a problem because eventually we're going to have speed beacons and stuff like that. But in between, as always, stuff has been happening. I've been live streaming. And by the way, going to do it again. Going to plug the second channel. If you want to see the live stream, there's a link to my second channel in the description box down below. You can find it down there. So you can... Free cows? Okay, we have a magic cow over here. That is very weird. Three cows, two pigs, and four chickens. But the reason I'm confused is because we brought four over here, and then they managed to escape from this little pen. And I swear, earlier, a minute ago, I was in here checking to see if they were okay, and there were only two cows. I think something is glitchy in these snapshots. Um, we had four pigs. Two of them managed to glitch out through these fence posts. And now they're gone, which kind of sucks. So we're prepared to move some animals into the area, which is good. But we need to rearrange this junk that we got over here. Part of our storage system is going to go in this space right here. And when I set this up temporarily, I think in the back of my mind, I knew this would end up getting moved. It's what always happens. You go, well, the center is over there. We'll move out a fair bit and this will never get in the way. But then you start putting your plans into action and all your temporary stuff is... Of course, directly in the way. Now, somewhere around here, I have reserved a book. Check that out. Mending, okay. And where we've been shoveling out all of this dirt, uh, my shovel has taken a beating, right? So we're going we're gonna to slap that thing on an anvil. If I had an anvil, apparently I don't have an anvil. I should have one in my ender chest. Excellent. And that's another tool with mending. I believe, I believe the only thing we need now to have mending is our silk touch pick and then we have mending on everything which is just a splendid start on this server everything is going ever so well excellent okay I do need a source of XP on demand though but we can go to the end for that yes so I might actually do you know what I'm just gonna take a trip to the end and repair my shovel by the way be sure to stick around to the end of this video we're gonna come back and disable this silverfish spawner without destroying it do you know how we could do that? <laughs> I didn't know how we could do this. Someone told me and it's such a great idea, but we'll come back to that at the end of the episode. We're back home with shiny new repaired tools and uh, oh no, no, that's right. I've been busy using them again because I've been preparing this area. Boy, oh boy, this is exciting. Okay, so in a chest over here, we have a redonkulous amount of these shulker boxes. Ah, oh, this one's already been used, so it's got a tag. That's why I didn't get pulled out automatically. So, I kind of lined out most of the sorting system now. This is going to be a great system. I've learned so much about these over the years, but what's going to be great about this is that we build it from the very get-go, and then it's going to be extremely useful for the entire season. So, over here, we're going to do a different design. All the designs are going to be kind of different from what we've done before. With exception to one of them. But anyway, this one's going to be for shulker boxes. And there's a design floor straight away. That would not open. I'll have to address that in a moment. These are only put here temporarily, by the way. These hoppers are going to be the ones that feed items into the shulker boxes. And this, like a few other parts of our storage system, will be one where 
the containers in front of them, this time being shulker boxes, require to have items in every single slot. So all of the items that you want to sort uh, will go through each and every one of these. And you can see that we've got space here for 18 of these in total. Last time we did it, I think it was probably 18 as well actually no it was 16 for the 16 different colors i'm not going to color code it the same way this season i felt that was counterintuitive you know you just want to pick a color that makes sense for what's inside of the box so if you've got a redstone box and you've got a box full of red blocks i think they should both be red it just makes it kind of easier to uh, get to the thing that you want so that's where that system's going to go and the reason i put it here is because we're eventually one day going to connect mine and forces islands together with a bridge or something like that and so if you were to come here on foot you would come from that direction over there right and you'd walk this way into the center of the base so you can walk either side of this thing to get into the circle here well it's not a circle it's definitely not a circle it is a square but it's our like hub for the storage so there's plenty of space to have an entrance here and here when we come around to the other side you're going to see that all that space disappears because we're going to have a traditional item sorting system like the impulse SV style if you know what that is we're gonna filter individual items into large quantities of chests and that's gonna go down on this side so I've already picked out a few materials that'll be uh, sorted and we have room for a lot here each one of these segments is six blocks so that's 36 in total that might be more than I actually ever need so we put items to be sorted in over here it goes through the shulker system it comes around through the bulk item filter system and then it goes into the one that I described in the last episode if you didn't see that it's probably a little bit confusing I'd recommend going back and checking that out but basically we're creating another set of filters for 16 items at a time right and these are for dyes they're for wool stained glass stained clay it's since occurred to me that there's also powdered concrete concrete and terracotta blocks and I think I might have uh, Mr. Trick there, let's say. Yes, I definitely have missed out a whole bunch of materials, so perhaps there's even more to consider. But we'll figure that one out, what's going to go in this space over here. And after going through there, it's then going to lead around into the main storage system after it's filtered out all of those other things, which is going to go right here. And unfortunately, all of this stuff is in the way, so I kind of need to move it about. But there is something else we need to take care of right now. Iskal, my man, I hope you brought some diamonds with you. It looks like hole. Oh crap, I didn't bring any diamonds! <laughs> you fool! Oh. I just ran here, dude. It looks like it looks like home though with the mycelium. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I know what you mean, right? You're you're a you're a mushroom brother as well, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway, I did say to you that I'd give you a, an elytra, you don't have to pay for one. Because I'm, I'm a nice guy, right? I was seriously gonna pay. For, I was seriously gonna pay for it, but I missed. I missed. Ah, don't don't worry about it. Look, I just want one thing from you, man. Uh -huh. I want to see you dance. Okay. Last season you made tango dance. <laughs> okay. Uh, Show us your a, moves. Do you have a TNT room uh, uh, prepared for me? I will. <laughs> to make you feel at home, I will craft some TNT for you. Come over here, you. Dance for me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> want to see your moves. <laughs> oh, crap. Do I. Do you blow it up your island? <laughs> 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 just for you, my man. Just for you. What do you like my moves, man? I like them a lot, man. I, I, do you know what? There was, the there was no way you was going to die then. <laughs> you <laughs> no, got all that fancy no. arm on. Here you go. You've earned yourself an elytra. It needs repairing. Okay. Thank you so much. I shall repair it. Has it been repaired before? No, it hasn't. So it'll be nice and cheap for you. It feels like There's also an unbreaking pants. book if you want to grab one. I got Unbreaking Book. Do you have a Mending Book, Tom? <laughs> I don't. Have, I literally don't. I don't. You got Unbreaking, then. You got that covered. Yes, I too have a fish farm. That doesn't make the note block sound. Ah, I like to hear the note blocks. You know, do, 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 do. I like yeah, the yeah, melody. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Thank you so much, man. I shall forever owe you a, a proper dance later. Okay. <laughs> See you later, buddy. I've said it before, but I feel like I need to say it again. The spruce here is temporary, man. So much of it in one space, it starts to look pretty bland and ugly, doesn't it? But check out these chests. They are looking awesome. This is going to be where the chests go for our sorting system. And you can see that these are six chests tall and eight across. And that is a lot of double chests to sort our item in. 
for this season. Now, while I'm talking about this thing, I'm going to be building a little bit more of it because we're going to touch on some ideas that I have for it. But this thing is going to be three deep in total. So it's going to go one block further back this way. And there's going to be a minimal amount of redstone to run this thing. It has a lot of positives to it. For example, all of these chests are regular chests, which means that you can open them at any point when this thing is sorting. Trap chests will actually most of the time, all of the time I reckon, break a sorting system. So that's a good thing. This one also runs over twice as fast than the previous designs that I've built where all of the chests are stacked side by side. So there is a lot of positives going on for this thing right here. One of the things that might not be so positive is making it look good, although that itself looks pretty beastly, right? I'm thinking some item frames can go on the front of these chests and then you can access it very easily from the side. There's no issues with trying to click on the chest, but this space in between, I was kind of picturing having some fence posts run from top to bottom and I wouldn't be surprised if some of you didn't agree with me on this one but the thing is we haven't even come up with the proper theme for this base yet at the moment the spruce is all just temporary we can change this stuff out later on this is also going to need some blocks around it I've realized as well and if we wanted to expand this thing and add more it'd actually be really simple to do so so we can always uh, push this out in that direction and that direction as well it's so good it's so flexible so we could be looking at something like that. I think the shape of this thing is really cool. Man, it's going to be a great system. But to build the rest of it, we need to get some redstone, probably a lot of iron for hoppers. And I've already done a big caving session today. I say big, I got about two stacks of iron in 10, 15 minutes. And then I spent all of that on those hoppers over there, which was purely to demonstrate where those would go. So we'll probably pinch those hoppers. However, I'm, I'm left with three hoppers and 45 iron at the moment, so we need to go caving for more. And hopefully that'll make building this thing in this episode possible. As of right now, though, we're going to take a little bit of break from sorting systems. So this is the location I got the animals from earlier in the episode, and I'll put the map on your screen. Across the ocean from me is Stress Monster, and below her swamp is another swamp with a witch hut in. And I asked her about this early on, and she said that she had no plans for the witch hut whatsoever, which is... Awesome, because if we want to build our own witch farm, we got a place to do that. Now, the location isn't terribly optimal. We would have to come over here and do some work to make it into a proper farm. But there you go. We've got that if we want to do it. And around here, there were pigs, there were cows and chickens over there. It was all fantastic, but I forgot about one other little creature that I was looking for, which was a sheep. I want to build a sheep farm early on this season. I actually have a really, really great design uh, in store and we'll be able to do that soon but first of all I've got to find the sheep right so we're going to go on another little expedition to see what's in this area and oh yes I need to pick up some of these two tall flowers as well for dyes of course I do because they're a thing that I need to gather <laughs> well that took all of three minutes and I found some rose bushes as well so this has certainly been productive come with me chappies <laughs> I wonder if there's any more of you in this area it probably is. I'll gather a few more and we'll bring them back to the witch hut, which is... Oh, there's a brown sheep over there. It's just over in that direction. By the way, when you're in a tunnel like this and you've got four sheep and you're holding some wheat, uh, they will push you along. <laughs> this is what I call next level transport in Minecraft. Just go AFK and they'll push you to your destination. No, I'm joking. This is slow and terrible. Uh, but it's an interesting little behavior. They are absolutely pushing me along here. Alright, so these fellas have been captured for future projects, and when I was streaming capturing these other animals, I did get some comments from people saying, why are you doing the cows? And uh, it's a good point, why are we bringing cows back over here? We've got mushrooms, if you didn't know, you can shear a mushroom and turn it into a cow. Well, I had this idea in the back of my head that there wouldn't be any mushrooms here because I planned on going around doing a time lapse and chopping them all down basically. I know it's a little bit cruel but it is a game okay and it'd be a good way to get some leather. We're currently out of leather because I've just spent the last of it on all of these item frames and we got most of that from fish farming which is pretty cool. You get leather from it as well so it's an AFK leather farm very slow mind you. Another thing we picked up on our travels as well were some saplings. So jungle saplings and a cha-cha saplings. We can grow these trees now and that means that we can have some more building options.
So I was going to be all like, hey, leave a comment down below and guess how many mushrooms we just killed because I was counting them and then I lost count. So I started to do my editing for the time lapse. I thought, we'll show every single kill and there was no way that I could fit them all in, right? <laughs> so yeah, you, you can still guess. You can still guess if you want to do that, if you want to go down below. And, uh, and type your guess, but the way we're going to tell is using statistics because I have yet to actually kill a single mushroom and now we'll be able to find out. So you can see all of the various things about my statistics and stuff in here. There you go, number of deaths, one, let's hope we can kill that up. Wow, oh do you know what, that's from Enderman farming isn't it? And look at all those fish caught and down the bottom here. Note blocks tuned, 1.9 million, that's kind of crazy isn't it? Anyway, we need to go into the mobs, we need to scroll down to the mushrooms. 119, I knew it would be over 100 but I uh, wasn't sure by how many. Let's go into my inventory and check it out. Look at that, tons and tons of leather. That's because we got looting on our sword. And of course, with the fire aspect, we get loads of cooked steaks. So the fish, that can get right out of here. See you later. We don't want you anymore. We're going to move on to cooked steak, which is a much better meal in this game. <laughs> oh man, caving is so peaceful when you go under our mushroom island. No mobs whatsoever, lots of iron. This will get us over the finishing line right here. Check it out. We need 57 hoppers in total, I think. And as we start to build this thing here, a thought crossed my mind. I haven't actually mentioned this design was made by Cybot. Once again, Cybot, who designed our last storing system and the one before that as well. <laughs> so basically, he sent me a Wells where there's lots of different sorting systems in them. And I often go through there and have a look and think about... Uh, how different ones can be used and stuff like that. This design initially I wasn't too keen on because I thought that what you had to do was load it up with items inside of every single dropper, which sounds a little bit strange, but basically there's supposed to be an item in every position at every time. And then I kind of forgot about that. <laughs> I picked out this design, I was talking to Cybot and he mentioned that and then I realised, actually, hang on a second, this can work without items being inside of it. It's going to be a little bit noisy though because we're going to hear all of those droppers get activated constantly. So I'm going to have a resource pack that's going to deliberately lower the sound of droppers and dispensers. Otherwise, this whole system will become pretty unbearable. You know what I mean? Because there's going to be loads of redstone activating these. So, these droppers are all facing upwards at the moment, and the whole process starts here. The items are going to that hopper will be sent up this dropper chain. At the top, we need to install a chest that brings the item across into these hoppers, so they can go down one by one and look into the chests in front of them. Then at the bottom, I believe what happens next is the dropper goes over to the side into the next dropper chain, and then there's a hopper there pointing into it. Now obviously I've got this other storage system available to look at, but I'm building this in a very crude way where I'm sort of just looking at it and guessing a little bit without a lot of preparation. I also don't know if we're building it in an order that would be difficult to build, if that makes sense. Like, if you've built a contraption yourself, you kind of figure out what's the best way to build it. You want to start with those blocks or these ones here. We're just going right into this and I'm not sure... Um, how it's going to play out. There might be some cases where we need to like rip some blocks out so we can place some other ones in the right direction. And what did I just run out of? Was it hoppers? I think it was hoppers. Yep, I got loads of iron. Alright, let's craft a few more hoppers. Now that is one sleek design right there. Think about how compact and compressed that is. There's something in every single block. And that's it. It's like three blocks wide. We've added a little bit more on the front here. Really impressed with this design. It's very cool. And it runs faster than the other one. I can't wait to get this thing up and running. But I have been thinking that'll probably come in the next episode, you know. Because I'm running out of time. And we've got other things to do this video as well. We've got to visit that silverfish spawner. And the next step is like a whole other game. When you've got to start sorting out your chests and testing it. And looking for redstone errors. But this is how the top bit works. And after I put these chests in, all we've got to do is the redstone at the bottom. So it's getting a little bit late here. And the redstone at the bottom is kind of compact. And I really don't want to mess it up. I think what we'll do is save that for another day. Next time we look at the storage system, I have all of that done for you. Right now I'm about to do something that I've not done before and I'm probably going to make a little bit of a fool of myself. Now coming into the end portal here I need to take off my chest plate because it has fawns and replace it with this one over here. And what we're going to try and do is capture six of the silverfish directly under the spawner 
or nearby to it. And there's a few things that I need to do. I need to think smart here because the silverfish are about to start spawning. So the first thing to do is to block this thing off so I don't get accidentally knocked into it. I reckon that would probably happen. Uh, that is a silverfish. They, they're already silverfish. Of course they are. Right, let's get rid of the stairs first of all. Um, I kind of want to lure them into a spot on the ground. And then I want to kind of trap them there. That's a silverfish. Right, so what we need to do is make a little cage out of glass. Man, I really don't know if this will work. Should I go lower? I think I might need to go a little bit lower. And half the blocks here are all, all silverfish as well. Okay, there's our first spawn. Um, I'm really not ready. And you're going to hit me a whole bunch. Oh, yes, you are. I, I just basically need to break these now. I wonder if I can stand up the top there and they can't come up to me. Because this is a little bit higher. Yeah, you guys are stuck. That's terrific. Okay. Oh, no! No, I don't... Okay, you, you guys have gone to the end. Someone's going to have a visitor when they go there. That was really weird. Um, glad I'm recording all of this. Hi. You can hit me from down there, apparently. Oh, sorry, didn't mean to hit you and your friends. There could be a lot of them spawning. Ow! <laughs> this is kind of awkward. So there go a few more blocks. Those lower down ones are going to be really tricky to get to. Or not, because <laughs> I've just managed to get to them. So now what we want to have in total is six of them in that space down below. When there's six of them down there, it means that this spawner will spawn no more. So then I name tag them, and they're kind of condemned to that fate. Now this is going to be tricky again. However, if six of them have spawned and are in this area, I can now go lower down like this, because one isn't going to spawn like where I'm standing. So that's okay. I think what I want to actually do and should have done already, is put more glass around the bottom here. I kind of wanted to put them into one spot, but that's probably going to be really tricky. So I need to break a few more blocks around the edge, and then place glass in it, right? So, <laughs> this is ridiculous. Oh, I think they found they might have found a way to me, I'm not sure. We're going to have to keep breaking these blocks, and then replace them with glass. Oh, no, okay, I was going to comment and say it's working, but now I've made a little path up to me, and... Oh, I need to break these blocks. <laughs> Should have built all of this straight away, right? But hey, you live and you learn. That's part of the experiment here. If I jump onto there, right, their way up is on that diagonal. We need to block this bit off. Start placing some blocks. Nope, you found a way up, you silly silverfish. That one was actually my fault. Let's break this block quickly. Bam, now you're stuck down there, right. So, hmm, I kind of, yeah, I kind of need you to fall in there again. Uh, that's bad, I've been knocked inside. Oh, goodness me. <laughs> this is bad news. Oh, not again. Not again. Oh. <laughs> okay, right. Let's go over to this side. Let's place uh, that there. Go up here. Break that one. Oh, a silverfish is already in it. Okay, right. And now we'll break you. Yikes. It seems like some of them are still spawning, but I think actually what's happening is that occasionally they escape and they go they go inside of a block around the outside and then that means another one can spawn. So the question now is where can I stand? I believe I can stand here and then we have a very difficult job of placing the rest of this glass. Okay, they are all in there. Yes, yes, and I'm left with eight pieces of glass. I came with one less than we needed, typical. We'll place that there, in theory a silverfish won't be able to get into it, and we'll place this another time. So, now all we've got to do is name tag each of them. There are one, two, three, four, five, six. This might be a little bit tricky though, because I could accidentally use it. Oh, don't tell me I need to be in there to name tag them. No, I'm too high up. What if I stand... Oh, jeez. I need something now like a fence post, or... Maybe I can make a cobblestone wall. I always keep wood in my inventory for a reason. If we replace one of these glass blocks with something we can look through, but they can't get through, maybe then we have a chance. Okay, what about now? Yes! Okay, that's one of them down. Excellent. So we can go around the sides. Another one? No? Not good enough? Let's keep trying. Let's keep going over to these edges. Aha! Slab will also work. Okay, that's actually, that's the trick right there. Bam, that's all of them. All of them name tagged. Okay, that is so awesome. So, we can keep this silverfish spawner here, and with this glass cage down the bottom and all these guys name tagged, it'll never spawn another one. Which means whenever we get around to doing the aesthetics of this area, we can put this thing on display, so it can be there out in the open, 
and uh, and no silverfish spawn. Amazing stuff. I'm going to leave this alone. I'll, I'll, I'm going to tidy it another day. I'm kind of worn out from these guys. Uh, by the way, this is suggested to me by my friend Rocky, who didn't discover it himself. So Rocky, if you're watching, thank you. Uh, I think it was Ray Works who discovered this or came up with this idea. I mean, it's technically not a discovery. It's always sort of been in the game, but it takes someone to come along and think about uh, how can we get this thing to stop spawning mobs and... They've managed to do it, so uh, Ray or Rocky, whoever it was, thank you for uh, that. That's going to make this room so much nicer, and I think we can get rid of this cobblestone now. Oh, and in the end, there's going to be a couple of silverfish, right? So we should probably jump in there, take care of them before they startle somewhere else. That's what I'm thinking. Right, in we go. Please don't knock me into the void. Okay, it's not near the void, and there's no silverfish there. Maybe someone else is in the end. Maybe they despawned. There's nothing more that I love to do right now than to stay on here and play with all the other hermits. Having such a great time. Season 5 is off to an amazing start. But it is late in the day for me. And I've just been for a cycle as well. I do love cycling. I've been out of the loop for a while. And uh, really enjoyed that. But now I'm exhausted because it's late. And uh, yeah, time to wrap this video up. There's one last thing that I'd like to mention. In the live stream that I believe I talked about in the beginning of this video... We went, aha, I believe it's in here. We went into the Never, yes, and we grabbed a lot of quartz from the NHO's area. The NHO is the new Hermit Order made of B-dubs, EFO, Vintage Beef, and Doc M77. And now I'm in a little bit of trouble with them, <laughs> let's say. And I don't know what to do about it. What do you guys think? I mean, I was just mining quartz in their area. I was leaving some signs behind saying X is quartz because I figured I'd come back and mine it later. I don't think there's nothing bad about that. It's not like they own the Never, you know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, let me know what you think about that with a comment down below. And uh, last of all, just want to say, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. And by the way, thank you so much for the support. The previous episodes, you've been knocking the ball out of the park. Really great to see those numbers. But of course, what I love most is uh, hearing what you think about the episodes. That always makes the biggest difference to me. So thank you as always for your love and support. And I'll see you in the next one. Ciao for now. Bye-bye.